three. By now, you should be developing quite a tight bond with your dog. And if you've been training hard, you should start to see the benefits of this pre-training period. Last week, Ron introduced Sam to a lead. We will show you how we've got on this week a little later. First of all, we're going to show you the progress that Ron has made trying to get young Sam to sit on command. There is a very important tool you need when getting your dog to sit down, and that tool is patience. I think that if you expect your dog to pick this command up straight away, then I'm afraid you'll be mistaken. Remember that every dog is unique and will react differently. There is no magic words or tricks when it comes to dog training. It's just time, patience, and the knowledge to train your dog. We'll give you the knowledge, but the rest is up to you. Are you standing a bit in front of him on purpose? or he's just doing that. Yeah. The first thing we should do is sort out our command. Now the obvious one would be sit, but every trainer is different. You can use whatever you like, just as long as you stick to it and don't change your mind. At the very beginning, we'll have to show the dog our intentions. We do this by lightly grabbing the dog by the scruff of the neck with the other hand on the dog's front, like in this example. And then we lightly push our dog into the seated position and then use our command of sit. And like always, if your dog has done what you have asked of it, we give it some fuss and attention. Here it is again in slow motion. Now we have taught you this technique, it is now up to you to install this into your dog. So we need to have a great deal of patience to do this, because a lot of repetition is involved. If you've watched last week's pre-training video, then you'll know that Ron was using the tennis ball to attract Sam's attention and thus getting him to walk on Ron's left hand side. Now let's see how Ron and Sam get along this week without the aid of the tennis ball. Things are starting off well, Sam is walking on the left and all that Ron is doing is holding out his left hand to Sam while he walks and he's also keep interacting and talking to him. Sam now looks like he's grasping the fact that Ron wants him to walk on his left and the only problem now is keeping Sam interested. Sam is getting distracted by the grass cuttings on the field so Ron must move to a more suitable area. Now we can see a vast improvement. Sam is walking on Ron's left and is not focused on anything other than Ron. Hopefully, by next week, Ron and Sam will have mastered this. So now that Ron is on his way to correcting Sam's walking pattern, he now needs to crack another one of Sam's bad habits, jumping up at people. This one is quite simple to solve. You just need some persistence. Ron's technique is easy to grasp. All that he does when he sees Sam about to jump up at him, he blocks Sam's jump with his thigh. In no instance should you push your knee into the dog. It's just a case of the dog jumping up and bouncing off your knee. Then we will tell it no in a stern tone of voice. Your dog will then gather that this is something that you're not happy with and over time he or she should stop jumping up. If you use this method every time your dog jumps up at you, then you will see positive results. If you let it slip here or there, then you will end up with a dog that will always jump up at you, and your friends, and your family, and even the people at the shoot. And that won't look good if your dog has muddy paws and gets them all over you, or even worse, somebody else. Yeah, that's the idea of it. Why are you doing it now? Now it's time to show you the progress that Ron and Sam have made regarding lead training. Ron has been training with Sam each day for around 15 minutes and sometimes twice per day. You will see a vast improvement in Sam because of this. If you can't train your dog for this amount of time each day, it just means that your progress will go a little slower. Ron will now show us the progress that they've made with the lead, but first of all, He's going to get Sam to sit down. Um, sit. This will make it easier for Ron to place the lead on him. You will notice that Sam is slightly apprehensive about the lead, but with Ron's reassurance there isn't a major problem. 
Ron now calls Sam's name and gives the smallest of tugs on the lead to let Sam know that he wants him to walk beside him. Now you can see a vast improvement in Sam's lead walking ability. And with another week's worth of training, both Sam and Ron will have it perfect. Last week, we told you that Ron was going to persist and keep training Sam in retrieval. Well, we're going to show you the progress now, but Ron is going to try something a little bit different. See if we can introduce him for a dummy, yeah? Yeah. So this, Ron thinks uh, that Sam is making progress in leaps and bounds, so he's going to try something that he hasn't tried to date with Sam, canvas dummy retrieval. Ron is going to use all of the techniques for a tennis ball and apply them to the dummy. The only difference will be that Ron will have to give Sam a lot of extra encouragement. The reason being is that Sam has never seen a dummy, let alone retrieve one. Come on then. Come on. Come on. It's a bit heavy for him. Yeah, he's trying though, isn't he? Come on. Another reason being that the dummy is intended for older and stronger dogs. So Sam will have a little trouble picking it up in his mouth and bringing it back to Ron. If you're thinking of introducing a dummy to your dog, then first make sure it's ready. And from then onwards, only use the dummy, not the tennis ball. Next week on the final edition of pre-training, we're going to build upon everything we have learned over the past few weeks. We will also show you a great tip for getting your dog to walk on the left hand side. And we're also going to see how Sam has improved on his dummy retrieval. Thank you.